All right, welcome everybody. This is how to navigate subject specific databases. My name is Carissa Powell. I use she, her pronouns. I am a student success librarian and I work a lot with the composition classes like English 101 and 102. And you can reach me at carissa at utk.edu. Hello everyone, I'm Brianne Dosh. I am a subject librarian here, which means I specialize um, in helping students and faculty find specific resources in specific areas. Um, my big three are psychology, neuroscience, and then also social, social sciences data in general. And you can reach me at bdosh at utk.edu. All right, so today we're gonna cover three main things. Um, how to use OneSearch for your specific topic. Um, and then finding and using subject specific databases for your specific topic, and then also how to contact your subject librarian, someone like me. So to get started, I want to know where you guys go when you want to deep dive on a topic. So this is an activity where you can scan the QR code with your phone or you can go to slido.com and enter in that number, or you can click the link in chat. But what I mean by deep dive is when you need to become an expert in something for a class, when you're interested in something, where do you go when you want to deep dive? Google. Google is a great place to start. And you can also get really awesome information. That's a great place. Oh, I love Google with an exclamation point. Yes, Google, Google is a great algorithm. Wikipedia, I love to start at Wikipedia, especially when I need to familiarize myself with something. If someone comes to me with a research topic they need help on, I will often orient myself using Wikipedia and making sure I check other sources. Yeah, I feel like sometimes Wikipedia can be demonized a little bit and uh, we are big fans of Wikipedia and just um, getting a good like background starting place on a topic as well. All right, does anybody have anything else? You can also chat it in if you want to. I just try to look up everything I can. I really, I really like that. I think when you want to deep dive, when you want to be the well-informed person, you want to have the right sources for your paper, for your presentation, you want to be well-informed. So you look up everything you can, whether it's on Google, whether it's in a library database or other things. So I really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. Google, again, it's a really great place. All right, so I just like to remind everybody what the definition of deep dive is, um, an in-depth examination or analysis on a topic. Um, so Carissa, can you click for the next one? Sorry. So we're gonna show you how to deep dive on specific topics and what you would do in Google or when you're trying to gather all the information you can in OneSearch and also how to do that in library databases, which I like to deep dive in these places because a lot of times that's where you can find really reliable and scholarly information that not only makes you an expert to your friends and in situations, but are what you should be using for your classes. All right, take it away, Carissa. All right, so I'm going to kick us off by talking about OneSearch a little bit. If you could put in chat whether or not you've used OneSearch before or whether or not you've heard of it before, that would be very lovely. Uh, for those not familiar, OneSearch holds a lot of our collections, and so this can be content that is sometimes in databases, but not always. So we're going to show both today, and then Brianne will go over some really cool databases. Some examples of things you might find in OneSearch include reviews, legal documents, uh, journal articles, newspapers, books, book chapters. So it holds a lot of different types of sources, both primary and secondary. So depending on what you're looking for, it could be a good place to start. So we are going to open up a different browser. Um, 
If you have not been on our homepage before, welcome to the library's homepage. OneSearch is situated directly on the homepage, which is very exciting. Um, we're going to be researching college students and stress today. So for the sake of this, college students and stress, and Grace is putting the link to this in chat as well. So you can save that for later. Something I really encourage folks to do when you're using OneSearch is to make sure you're signed in. I did that before we did this, um, but on your screen, it will probably say sign in at the top of the page instead of your name. And that way you can do things like save items as you're looking for them. And it just makes it a little easier. You can save an entire search. So maybe you're like, I have the most complicated search string. I'm going to save the entire thing so I don't have to recreate that again. From here, a couple different things we could do. Um, this was covered in a previous workshop, but we can put quotes around college and student to um, search it as a phrase instead of as separate words. And I think my free, my screen might have froze just a tiny bit. But basically what putting quotes around it does is it'll search it as those two words as you see them next to each other instead of anywhere in the search results. Um, so that's one thing that I recommend doing. From there, the left-hand side of the screen, you have a couple options for narrowing down. So you can narrow down to the type of availability it is. You can, I recommend doing relevance unless you are looking for the absolute newest thing on a topic, or if you're looking for primary sources, maybe you're looking for the oldest thing. From there, we can also narrow by format. So Maybe you're in a class and the professor is asking you to specifically look for a book. You could narrow from there as well. You can also narrow by creation date. So sometimes when I'm working with students, they're looking for something published within the past five, 10 years. And so the easiest way to do that is to come here and change the dates and refine from there. So a few examples of doing this is maybe we are looking for something in a peer reviewed journal. And this is just my disclaimer that you can find things in a peer reviewed journal that are not peer reviewed articles. So still double, triple check the content that you're getting. And then from here, I'm going to take a quick look from here. I recommend just like reading the titles and just doing a little skimming. If you're short on time, a really easy way is to come and hit these push pins. So you can go look at these later. Um, for the sake of this, I am really interested by this one. So article number three, this is Constant stress has become the new normal, stress and anxiety and inequalities among US college students in the time of COVID-19. Um, so if I wanted to know more about the article, I would click the article title. From here, I can see that I could go find this online in two different spots. So I could go click through either of these to get access to the article. Um, and sometimes it will also show the description of the article, the abstract. When you're doing deep diving, like Brian and I are talking about today, something else you can do is use these different subject headings to look into some of those different areas. So maybe I'm starting out and I, you know, I'm just interested in college students and stress, and I don't know a whole lot more about that. 
Um, and maybe I want to add in anxiety to my search terms. Maybe I want to add in um, depression. So this could also provide some inspiration for other search terms. So once I have access to this article, it will take you out of OneSearch. And from here, you will be able to look and find your article. This one also links a PDF, which is very nice, but that is not the case on every single result. From here to get back to this article, I recommend either sending this to yourself in an email, copy and pasting the permanent link, or again, if you're signed into OneSearch, you can hit the little push pin. So that is a brief overview of how to use OneSearch. Brianne, is there anything you would want to add to that before I hand it back over to you? Yeah, that was awesome. That was how to use OneSearch. Over to databases. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen over yours. Um, all right, can you see my screen? Perfect. Oh, there we go, sorry. Um, okay, so now that we know how to deep dive or how to use, um, one search to start becoming an expert on a topic. I'm going to talk about databases versus one search. Um, so first I'm going to go over what is a database. Um, a kind of librarian esque definition is a collection or an index in librarian terms of resources with full text citations or abstracts. And so by resources that can be peer reviewed journal articles, that can be book chapters, that can be books. Um, but a lot of times people are going to databases for journal articles, but it's not just journal articles. So that's why I say resources. And sometimes databases can be subject specific um, where it's just a psychology database or just a bio biology database. Um, but sometimes they include many subjects. Um, examples include academic search complete, that is, that was, is one that includes many subjects. Then there's psych info, which is primarily focused on psychological research. And then the last one um, for the example is a web of science. I'm gonna take you through, as a psychology librarian, I'm gonna take you through psych info and then also show you what it'd be like to search in web of science. So here I am on the library homepage. Um, I'm gonna, go over how to find our databases from where we're at right now. Um, so here's our main access for OneSearch, um, where you can come here and search directly like college students and stress like we did before. Um, but then we also have this research, research tools um, area with its own white, white box. How I know that I'm in the right place is it says browse databases and guides. So if I'm looking for databases, I think this is a great place to start. You can use this drop down menu to click on different subjects um, and see what's available to you. Um, but I prefer to come here and click this word databases right here and see all of them at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And here we are, databases by subject. And what I like about this is a lot of times in college or even in your own interests, they aren't just on one thing. And this is a great landing page to see what is available to you or what is recommended when you want to use a database over OneSearch um, or use a database to become a subject expert. Um, so for an example, let's say I am in a biology class. Um, I can come here and click on biological sciences 
and I can see what the best bets are. Um, I can also see this great thing where this is the subject librarian for biology. So if I have a question, I can get in contact with her, but I can also come here and explore what databases are available to me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and I'm gonna show you psychology because that's where we're going. Um, first, here I am as the psychology librarian. I've decided to recommend psych info as the best bet when you're wanting to find specific psychological research. Um, but then we also have other databases that are related to it. So I recommend when you are looking for something and you wanna try out doing some of your searches in databases um, to come here to this page, because it's a great place to find information about your subject librarian and also to find what databases the library subscribes to. I'm gonna back up really quick and tell you guys um, how I like to think about when I'm gonna to go to one search versus a database. And so I'm gonna come here to this illustration that I use a lot of what one search is versus a database. So one search like Carissa outlined is everything, almost everything that we possibly can. It's our print books, our ebooks, our maps, our journals, our digital collections. And you know, it captures a lot of our journal articles and databases. But as you can see, it doesn't capture all of them. And the way I like to think about it is one search is a really great place to be when your topic is interdisciplinary, where it's on more than one subject, when you're getting oriented in a topic after you've taken your search terms to Google to learn more about it. Um, and one search is, and it's gonna capture almost everything um, that's available to you. But I like to think of databases as more of the precision tool. And I'll show you how that looks different when I show you the search Carissa did in something like Psych Info. So I think it can get confusing what one search is versus databases. You're never in the wrong place when you're on the library website looking for um, scholarly sources to support you in school and in life. But I just like to explain that. So let's go back to the home page and let's find Psych Info. So I'm gonna to go to databases. Again, I can scroll all the way down to psychology and find psych info that way. But what I like is psych info is one of the, our top used databases. So it's here in our most popular databases box. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. All right, so here we are. And you know what I love about databases is if you've used OneSearch, you're gonna be able to use a database. They work really similarly with how you're able to do searches. I always like to start from advanced search because it just helps my brain think about how I'm piecing together my keywords. So I'm gonna do the same search that Chris did. I'm gonna do college students and stress. And in her first search, she got over a million results in one search. So let's see how many results we get in our precision tool in Psych Info. Oh no. So if this happens, always just go back to the library website and start over. I've had my tabs open all day doing searches, doing librarian stuff. So when in doubt, go back to the library homepage. Let's try that one more time. All right, here we are. Let's go to advanced search and see if it works for us. Voila, here we are. This looks a lot like the advanced search in OneSearch. And I'm gonna type in college students and stress. And let's click search. All right, so instead of over a million results, I only have 13,000 and some change. That is still a lot of results, which lets me know maybe I need to think about my topic more, refine it, um, think of other things to try to add to my search. But this is just an example of the difference of doing a search in a database versus um, OneSearch. So similarly, 
to OneSearch if my mouse will start working. All right, here we go. Um, you can limit it to just things that are peer reviewed, um, which took us down by a few thousand. You can limit it by a date range. Um, and you can also play around with the subjects and the different um, methodologies and populations. And every database is gonna have different filters on the side, but they're a great way to start exploring your topic and seeing what's available. Um, I One thing I recommend of using Google and a database together is stress seems really broad, right? Um, similar to Carissa's searches, I saw that anxiety is related, right? Other things are related. Um, and on stress, I was doing some Googling earlier and I found that there are different types of stress. So it comes out with it being, um, something that can be manifested physically and you can, or things in anxiety or depression or general mental health. Um, but this is a great way that you can use Google and a database to get to know a subject better. One of the things that I found in Googling earlier was sometimes social stress when it comes to our relationships or other things. Um, can manifest differently than just stress or anxiety or other things that are related to this topic. So I'm gonna go ahead and press search, adding social stress, and that brought me down to about 4,000 results, right? That's letting me know I'm getting, I'm getting more specific in what I'm looking for and what's going on. Um, and I'm not having to go through as many, as, as many resources that we might have found in OneSearch. Um, you can see that it isn't um, having social and stress stay together. So I'm going to do similarly to what Carissa did, where I want to search the phrase social stress. So I'm going to put um, quotations around it so I can search that, that phrase, which means if those words appear together, those are the results it's going to return. All right, so that gave me about 200 results, right? Which is really manageable, something that you can go through and see what you're interested in and what works for your topic. Now, every database is gonna be a little different for how you access things, um, but let's click on the first one, I'll show you. So this is not the full text right here, right? It gives me the abstract, it gives me lots of interesting things to look at with, um, where it was published, the year, all of this kind of um, entry information about it. And so it's important that when you're in a database to look for the words, get full text. So I'm gonna click on that. It'll take me to a new tab. And voila, here is the full text that I can use. Um, there's not always a get full text button. And so here, we have one that doesn't have the get full text, but it does have the power T for find text. So if there's not a get full text button, search for the power T. So I'm gonna go ahead and click find text. Now it takes me through all of the different discovery layers like we find in OneSearch. And here we are, I can download the PDF or I can go to the article link. Um, if you run into any problems while you are searching in a database, don't give up. It doesn't mean you don't have access to it. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong or the database was too advanced or anything. It just means you should chat the library. What I love is that in a lot of our databases, chat will follow you. And so I could chat from right here and it will let my the librarian who picks up chat on the other end know where I chatted from, that I'm chatting from Psych Info, and they can help you in real time if you run into any access issues. All right, so let's say I'm done with my search on college students and stress, and I'm interested 
in animals in stress. Let's say I'm just interested in the concept of stress in general. And so I, I want to go back and modify my search and I want to see PsychInfo, it's a psychology database. I wonder if it has anything about animals and stress. So I'm going to go back to advanced search. I'm going to clear my form and I'm going to just type in elephants and stress. So let's say I read something about an a elephant being stressed in a zoo and I want to know because I'm here doing these stress searches and I'm going to click search. All right, it gave me less than 100 results, which lets me know maybe I'm not in the right place. And also, it doesn't look like this is referring to elephants as animals, right? It's the elephant in the room, right? Like, I think I'm figuring out that psych info is about psychology, which is about humans. So I need to find maybe an interdisciplinary multi-subject database. So let's go back to the library homepage and let's find Web of Science. Um, so here I am, library homepage. I'm gonna click here for databases. Um, and this is something that you will learn navigating databases. I can come here to biology um, and look and see what's recommended there. But Web of Science is a known multidisciplinary database. So it's not as um, focused as PsycInfo, um, but you can find stuff maybe about stress and about animals. So let's see how that goes. I'm gonna click on Web of Science. It's been kind of slow today. So let's see, this is the fun part about accessing all of the resources we have. All right, look, you can tell I was searching this earlier. I wanna search stress and elephants, and I'm gonna see if I am in the right type of database for this search. All right, I got over 500 results. And look, it is talking about elephants as in animals, right? And so this is a great example of PsycInfo is a great database, but it's not the database for everything. And so you won't always know offhand what is a multidisciplinary database or um, where the right place to be for your search is. So don't be afraid to play around or what we're gonna get to next is getting in contact with your subject librarian. As you'll see, Web of Science, it looks a little different um, than PsycInfo, and it looks different than OneSearch, but again, it has the search field and it has your results and your filters on the side, right? If you've used Google, if you've used OneSearch, you can use any type of database. Similar to PsycInfo, um, the full text is not gonna be right here in this record page you're going to have to click on the find text buttons or the find full text buttons um, to get you where you wanna be. So again, sometimes it can be more clicks in a database, but it's a really helpful way to become an expert and to deep dive on a topic. Um, now let's say you are, you have a new topic and you're not sure where to go, um, or you know you need help in biology and doing biology searches. So I'm gonna show you how to find who your subject librarian is or who the librarian is for that subject or what you're interested in. So there's the way to do it where you can see who the librarian is while you're looking for databases, like I showed earlier, where we go databases, I'm interested in biology. Wow, not only do I know that these are the databases she recommends. This is how I get in contact with the biology librarian, right? And it's similar for every subject that you click on here. But another way to get to just the list of subject librarians to see how to get in contact with them is if you scroll down from the main part and come under here to research, you can click on subject librarians and it will show you all right, anthropology is Greg March, right? And it will take me to his page and let me know how to get in contact with him. And it will also take you to his different library guides on that topic. Um, if this is hard to navigate or you're not 
able to find the specific subject that you're interested in, chat the library and they'll recommend a librarian for you. We all love it when you guys reach out um, and you're able to get help. My favorite thing is to work with students and to show them how to get become subject experts and to become subject specific on any interests that they have. So that is what I have for you guys today. Let's do another Slido. What questions do you have? We covered a lot with OneSearch and we covered a lot with the different databases. Do you have any questions off the bat? All right, we will definitely have time for questions after the recording. Um, I just want to make sure that the people who are still here that you, if you will please tell us how you felt or any questions that you had or you found confusing about the workshop um, to please take this end of workshop survey to let us know how we're doing. And please don't miss next week of how to evaluate sources once you find them from a database or from OneSearch. Thank you so much. Yes, we would love if you took the survey. If you're watching this on YouTube, the survey will be in the box below. And we're going to go ahead and end the recording and answer any questions.